My name is Abeja Winnie. Uh -huh. How was school? School was fine. How do you feel now? I feel good. You feel good? Why? What's good? What's good? Tell me. Because I ate break. Oh, I break today. Let nobody relapse on taking the medicine. I know I've got you by my side. I know I've got a hoping. St. Francis started way back, that's 20 years ago, 1998. There were very few organizations taking care for people living with HIV AIDS. I think that time we were only TASO and mobile home care services, which was, I was the manager then. So when it closed, uh, I got seed funding from Mature Phonics Trust in the UK, which was a kickstart in 1998. We started with four volunteers and inherited 3,000 patients that were transferred from mobile home care services to St. Francis Local Services. Omwana Rehabilitation Center is a program under St. Francis Healthcare Services that was started in 2008 by Adrian Gonod. The goal of Omwana House is to rehabilitate HIV positive and malnourished children, reintegrate them into their communities and give them perspectives for a self-sustaining future. Since we started, we've registered 302 children. Mm. Among those 302, we've lost like 48. Those came in with complications like a cancer. Others had like a basket of sickness, tuberculosis, opportunistic infections. But the majority are still living. These children are identified in the communities among our clients that we serve. The children are given special care during a period of three months to one year. A medical team composed of a doctor, nurses and a nutritionist give them the specialized care they need. They are also given psychosocial support by the social workers and the counselors. If children are well enough, they attend a nearby school. I am a, I'm a young youth living with HIV. I was born with HIV, stroke AIDS, but my dad took long to know that I have HIV. I was really very sick, even I used to not walk. I, I was like a person who is just lame. I was just moving with the what? With the buttocks. The time when I came, they, they brought me to St. Francis, Sister got me on the roadside. Eh? They saw when I was really very sick, very and very sick, they decided to take me to Kampala, just Arasi Mengo. I was there for one and a half year. Then after that, I came back here to Omwana. When we receive children from the community or from the nearby hospital, it's my role to make sure they add hair because that's the biggest challenge they have when they're in the community. And this is done by making sure that they take all the medicine as prescribed. When these kids come in, we give them hope. I start living here with sister in Omana. 
for, for one year. Sister was convincing me, please Faith, try to take your tabs. During that time I was very, very stubborn and sister took care of me until I was now, I was, I, until I was, I was now good. The major thing is, of course, love. Some kids, they come in when they are full of sores. Eh? People fear touching them. But when they are in, you see, some of us, we hug them. So that hug only, it just opens the brain of that kid that there's somebody who loves me. A child comes in when they are already facing very many issues back home. For example, like neglect. They are already depressed. They are already in pain. But when we sit together and we talk things over, it is a process. From the time the child comes in, you're in contact with them, you build the rapport with that child. And by the time the child leaves, already they know their status. They are able to come to terms with taking the medication, and they are already coming to terms to accept the situation as it is. Duka, duka, duka. When they are in the house, we treat them like our own kids. Eh? We make sure that these kids clean the house with them, of course, we supervise them. Then we've got the gardening part of it. As soon as their condition has stabilized, they return to their communities. Even once home, their medical and social situations are still followed carefully. We work with the families to do uh, food and nutrition and food security in their home so that when these children are referred back to their homes or their household, they are able to keep uh, living the same way they have been living at the rehabilitation center. My name is Abeja Wini. I, I study in Madvan Primary School. I am ever happy at school. In future, I would like to be a bank manager. I came to know Abeja Winfred in 2010, when she was brought to Mwana House severely malnourished. The story behind is that the father had neglected the child and was spending more time at his workplace, being that he's working in a sugarcane plantation. So with his busy schedule, he was not able to look after the child properly. I was sick. Then they, they simply told me that I was about to die. I did not have energy, but those people in Omana treated me until I became good. Many times children go back home and then the one problem, the reason why they always come back to the centre is because they fail to adhere. But if we go home and do pill count and we, we ascertain that they are really taking the medicine, then that's a very good thing. And when they come for the adolescents, they come for the Young Positives Club. So we keep on imparting them with information and then they get support from their peers. But also when they're at home, we talk to the guardians about some other psychosocial issues like discrimination and stigma. Even if I am sick, I can still become a bank manager. I can still play with my friends. I can still learn. I can still enjoy my life. I came to St. Francis in 2010 and it was my sister who brought me here. It was after the death of my mom, and at home we were just, we were always crying, we were always in, we were always sad. So my dad asked him to find at least a place whereby we could be cheered up, we, maybe we could smile again, at least to forget about the death of our mom. But first of all, we had that fear of other people knowing about our self-status. Then she convinced us and told us, no, the club that we are going to join, it's for, for the youth who are living with HIV. So when I, when I heard that, I felt like maybe I need to be there. 
The children are involved in various club activities that provide life skills and allow the children to socialize and learn from each other. These include the Young Positives Club, Shadow Idol Club, Youth Friendly Corner, Youth Savings Group, Sports, Music, Dance and Drama. These clubs we teach these people to live on their own, to grow knowing that they have to be leaders. When they get their fellow peers talking to them, they listen more to them than us. Play is uh, an important aspect in the lives of children. We involve them in uh, painting, shading and drawing of pictures. Then we also have outdoor activities where we, they are involved in football, volleyball for the older children. <laughs> we have two children groups. One would have, have the pediatric, which is between two years to 10 years. We see them on Wednesdays, once in a month. They come with their, their guardians and parents. We give them health education. We talk much to them about the disease. But when they come of age, up to around nine, 10 years, we open up to them. We tell them their condition. We give them free environment. We ask them to interact freely with each other. So there they don't hide anything. They are free to talk to each other. They are free to express their problems to one another, their challenges, and the other thing that affects them. So many adolescents had unsuppressed viral loads. And ever since we started the Young Positives Club, you know, they've been encouraging each other and sharing and getting involved. And many of them that were not suppressing have now started suppressing, which is a very, very good thing. And it's a big thing. And they feel so proud and it has created opportunity for the medical workers to interact more with the adolescents, which has really pushed adherence to another level. So every child wants to know, am I suppressed? They want to know their, their regimen, the regimen that they're on, things that they had even no interest in before we started the Young Positives Club. They are moving out of denial and they are embracing who they are and living positively. I came in when I was still young. I did not know much about life. So when they brought me to the club, I found there are many young kids, but they were also living with HIV, so we shared. I was hoped, they built me up, they empowered me with confidence, with different skills, public speaking skills, even listening, because I was not a good listener. When I was put on the school fees program in Omwana, since then, my life has changed. I've been on track, not by my understanding, but guidance. That guidance they give me, it has kept me on track. We have saved many, many children who would have, otherwise have died a long time ago. You will see children who have come from babies, now they have become teenagers, now they are adults. And they, they have also continued school. We have children who have gone to the university. We have those who are doing uh, taken for uh, subjects or skilling them into different uh, skills like mechanics. Others have gone into institutions like laboratory training institutions and they have become peer educators. They have become ambassadors. They have gone out even outside the Uganda to talk about to children living with HIV AIDS and advocacy. We have also trained the guardians in food security, in income generation. We do have a village savings and loan association among the carers. Because for us, we are not uh, continuous caring for these children, but we are also preventing, especially HIV mother to child transmission. We are reducing the risk of these children being born with HIV. So that's why the two programs are going concurrent with each other. When I sit down and calculate how much they have paid for me in school, for sure it is too much. I could not raise it by myself. Not, not even my parents could raise it. Then I was like, how can I give back? Because even words are not always enough to express how I feel, how grateful I am in Oma, for Omana, what they have done for me. And I was like, no, I also need to support these kids. If at least we can save some life, if we can, we can at least give some love. If we can at least give some support, it is the best. 
So every day I come here, I come at Oman because of that. I would like to acknowledge the support of Omana. Uh, this organization has really done a wonderful job to make sure, make sure that these children continue living a healthy life. I would like to also thank the staff, committed staff really, who have worked tirelessly with these children. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our partners, the Stephen Lewis Foundation, for the journey they have worked with us when we started this program of caring for the children that are born with HIV AIDS, mainly living under the grandmother's households. So all those years it has been supported, especially for treatment, management of opportunistic infections of young children, and also supporting the young positives who have outgrown the HIV AIDS disease and now they are healthy. I would like to thank the other volunteers that have come in, interacted with the children, bring them hope, and put a smile on their face. I'm really, really very grateful indeed. With continuous support for these children and emphasis on elimination of mother-to-child transmission, ending the HIV-AIDS epidemic is within reach for Uganda. <laughs>